thank you everyone for joining us. My name is Tipo and I'm the Executive Director of Foundation Beyond Belief. So I'm just going to very quickly, briefly go over uh, some of the things that we've achieved this past year and go over also some of the changes that we'll have upcoming. Um, so Foundation Beyond Belief is very grateful for our donors and our partners. Because of our donors and our partners, we've actually been able to increase our impact um, th in this past year, and we've focused in on food insecurity while in, um, expanding our Beyond Belief network and our grants. So last year in October, we launched the Compassionate Impact Grant, which is a $150,000 three-year grant to a single organization that has an innovative solution to create, um, ending poverty or hunger, promoting good health or well-being, and fostering decent work and economic growth. A recipient for the 2021 Compassionate Impact Grant was Food Rescue Alliance. Um, and through Food Rescue Alliance, we have been able to rescue over 20 million pounds of food and feed over 600,000 individuals in 32 cities and three countries. Um, in addition to the Compassionate Impact Grant, one of our newer programs is the Food Security Project. The Food Security Project was launched in May 2021 under our Beyond Belief Network. The Beyond Belief Network is a network of over 100 volunteer teams, and they work in seven countries, 27 states, and D.C. Under the Food Security Project, we've been able to feed over 4,000 um, households and many more individuals. We've also distributed over 26,000 pounds of food and over 8,000 meals. Uh, under the Beyond Belief Network, we are going to be pushing our humanist um, disaster recovery, which in the past has been one of our most popular programs. In the past with humanist disaster recovery, we've been partnered with American Humanist Association on All Hands and Hearts, um, and we will be continuing to partner with those organizations. However, instead of focusing on recovery, we're looking more towards disaster preparedness. Um, one of the Cape, uh, our Beyond Belief Network has the capacity to do so much more to really stockpile food and supplies before people need them. And so we're going to be building out clusters of teams in really climate disaster prone areas uh, throughout Florida and Texas and other parts of the US. Uh, so that's that's what's going to be happening with the humanist disaster recovery. And then our final program is humanist, uh, humanist Action Ghana. So Humanist Action Ghana was once known as the Humanist Service Corps. And this is a vocational training program for women in Ghana. What we're trying to do there is really end the generational cycle of poverty and gender inequality by providing vocational training and financial independence to women. Uh, I'm really proud to say that we've graduated 10 women in September 2021, and we are moving the program towards independence. This will be led by our current Ghana administrator, program administrator, Yvonne Stanek Larson. Uh, Yvonne has been with the program since the beginning, and she's su done such an amazing job. And we really felt like it was time to have internal decision making by stakeholders, um, by people who are most affected by the program. So that is why we chose to make the program independent, and that will be happening in March 2022. Uh, so that's just a little bit of what we've done during this past year or so. Um, like I said, this was intended as an informal discussion to kind of let people ask questions about FPB and get to know us a little bit and see um, where we're going. So I'm open to questions. And I've gone ahead and changed the security uh, to, to let folks unmute themselves. So if there are folks on who want to go ahead and ask a question, um, we can do it that way.
Okay, um, it's great to, to meet you. My name is Harriet. I uh, work with Women's Global Education Project. We were a past um, Foundation Beyond Belief grantee uh, from the Humanist Grants Program. And I'm curious, moving into 2022, how are you conceptualizing your, I guess, split between uh, domestic programs and international? Um, and if you could provide any insight on that strategy, that would be really helpful. Thank you. Sure. Um, well, great to meet you, Harriet, and thanks for the, the question. So uh, last year when I came on board, the one thing that we really noticed is that FBB in the past had been really widespread in our impact, but because we're such a small organization, it kind of makes it difficult to create sustained impact. Um, what we kind of decided to do was bring it in a little bit, bring it in and focus a little bit more on domestic, and that's where a lot of our Beyond Belief Network teams are. We do have teams in other countries, but um, it, primarily they are in, located in the U.S. So with the Compassionate Impact Grant, what we really want to focus on is allowing for partnerships and volunteer opportunities with the Beyond Belief Network. We don't want to create, you know, we're interested in not only providing grants and funding, but also in creating those partnerships that allow for sustainable impact. Um, and once we really create that in the US domestically, we're going to continue to expand that outwards. So with the um, Compassionate Impact Grant this year, it has it opened on November 15th. So we're welcoming any applications um, and you can find out more about that on our website. What we have decided to do is to tailor the grant towards North America. And that includes the US, Canada, um, and parts, parts of um, Central America as well. Uh, we do have countries listed there, so we are open to working really, again, domestically or abroad. Um, and that hopefully will provide some opportunities for partnership as well. Awesome, thank you for explaining more about that. I actually have a question for Wendy because I was just I was just sort of you know I've been putting together our annual report recently and going over um, some of the things that we've accomplished this year and it's been kind of a gangbuster year for FBB it's been a really cool year and Wendy I think you're one of the folks who's been with the organization the longest and um, started a number of the programs uh, what has it been like for you this year to kind of see some of your vision come to fruition and what are you most excited about with the programs uh, going into the next year? <laughs> that's, that's a big question. Um, I, I think what I've been really excited about this last year is we've, we've always had really big um, hopes and dreams and visions for the future. And we, and as a result, we've had these great impacts that we could do um, that, that we've decided to, you know, like Tiff was talking about with CIG, we're bringing it in to North America because that will allow us to have this really targeted impact and expand that in, um, in a sustainable long-term way. And I'm, and I'm so excited that we are, we've always been about sustainability and and an impact and evidence-based impact and now we are you know looking at our programs and saying okay how can we how can we do that better how can we be more sustainable have more impact and that's coming to fruition in 2021 in these really the you know the few in these ways that I didn't see coming necessarily um the food security project I'm not sure would have happened um if we it, as a, a planet had um, not experienced COVID and the food secure insecurity that came that increased as a result of that. And we realized, okay, we really need to have uh, this focus on food um, right now. So maybe we still would have done, done food security project, who knows, no way to know. But um, I think that, that the, the, 
the things that we have learned and put together in doing the food security project this year has put us in this really great position to figure out how to, uh, you know, empower the B, uh, the BBN teams and others to be a force of disaster recovery, preparedness, um, well, preparedness um, in their local areas. And I'm, I'm so thrilled to be working on figuring out, figuring out exactly what that's going to look like. Um, Cause we're still, we're still figuring out the details of that. We know where we want to go, but we're figuring out how to get there. And so you know, looking at what we did with Food Security Project and how what we learned from that um, is going to just make that program better. So I'm, that's where <laughs> I also may or may not have spent a lot of today thinking about that. Um, so that's definitely at the top of my mind. But um, yeah, I'm, ex I'm so excited. I can't even tell you. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's, that's been cool for me to watch too. And um... Yeah, I guess Tiff, can I ask you kind of the same question? I mean, you've only been here a year, so you get you've had kind of just a you you came in with fresh eyes and saw the potential of the organization. What are you most inspired and excited about for 2022? Yeah. Um I think I'm pretty similar with like I see things pretty similar to Wendy in terms of what I'm most excited about. Um I really when I came in, I wanted to focus on the volunteer network. And that was the biggest thing because we have so many resources, but these, these organizations are very much volunteer uh, based and they don't necessarily have the same capacity for funding that a bigger organization might. So my excitement really leans towards like supporting those teams and expanding them out. Um, like Wendy mentioned uh, with human disaster, human disaster recovery, there's so much capacity there, but we haven't yet really built that out. We've been sorting through it. And I can see us having clusters of teams, um, especially as climate change has become a very real and pressing issue. Right now it's affected food sources, it affects access to water. And a lot of times the most vulnerable populations, those underserved and underrepresented populations are the ones that are really facing the, the brunt of that. Um, bearing the brunt of that. So I'm excited to kind of see how these teams can work together and um, support them. I'll also just add, since I didn't mention this before, that um, having been, uh, you know, around the Ghana program since almost the beginning um, and seeing and knowing that it's always been a dream that that, you know, the goal was always for it to go to independent, to actually be here and, and see it go independent. And um, I just have, I, I think that it's gonna be an amazing program on the ground in Ghana. And I am so looking forward to, um, to seeing what happens come March, 2022, because that's, that's thrilling. And just to add on to that, so Wendy was um, part of the original Pathfinders project, which sought out the location for, for Humanist Action Ghana. And she's been really instrumental in terms of working together. Yvonne as well um, has been instrumental in that moving towards independence. Um, one of the things with the Humanist Action program that we're going to do is we're targeting the northern region of Ghana in Tamale, which is a little bit more um, in need of, of help. Um, the Northern region is one of the poorest regions in Ghana and unfortunately hasn't been, it hasn't as, had as much access to resources. Um, so Yvonne made that decision to kind of move back to the Northern region. And I'm just really, it's been incredible to watch the work that Wendy and Yvonne have done in moving towards independence and making a greater impact as well. Actually, Sarah, since since you've asked us the question, Wendy and myself, 
um, I'd like to put the question back at you. What has been most exciting for you throughout this past year and where do you see FBB going forward? Uh, I, I mean, I think similar to uh, what you both have talked about in terms of the BBN teams, I uh, it, it's been really cool to see um, extra focus on the teams. The amount of money that that the grants that we provide the teams goes so much farther than some of the other work that we've been done because it's it's not passing through and passing through. It's going right to the teams that are doing the work. Um, I think during the, the um, horrific Texas freeze storm that we had this past year, um, seeing how all of our teams that were there were able to make immediate use of, of grant money and, and really save lives. I mean, they were putting people in hotel rooms. They were just doing some incredibly inspiring things. Um, And so uh, really honing in on that program and building it out because it's been so successful and the impact is so um, it's just so immense for, for such a small investment. Um, I mean, I think right now we're, we're sponsoring our food security teams for a hundred dollars a month. And, and the, the amount of meals that we're serving with that little bit of money. Um, So it's, I think going into the annual appeal this year where we're asking folks to donate a hundred dollars a month, it, it feels like, uh, it's an inspiring ask. Like it's an excite, like, I don't feel guilty about asking people for that money because I see how very directly it goes, translates into, into work on the ground. So, um, it's just an extra good feeling to, to, to see these teams and, and building relationships with the folks who are doing that work. I mean, we've had a lot of good networking opportunities throughout the year with the teams too, and, and um, the immense compassion of the leadership in those groups. I, yeah, so I, I think um, really watching the BBN team step up this past year and then watching FBB rise to support them and build, build that program out uh, has been kind of my favorite part of this year. Yeah, for sure. I think um, with the Beyond Belief Network, one of the great things about it is, you know, it's not just passed through grant money that we're giving to them, but we're also providing a means for them to get in touch. Um, during some of our other firesides, we've had a lot of the team leaders for BBN come forward and they would ask each other questions. They would connect, um, especially with the food security project. There's so much that goes into it. You know, it looks simple from from far away, but when you're actually really in it, you have to deal with things like permits, um, logistics of getting food and storing, keeping food really fresh. So those are things that teams get to ask each other. Um, and FBB has been serving as the, the connector to that, to these teams. Um, something else we've been trying to provide is just like spotlighting teams and helping them with building up a social media presence, helping them uh, get donation portals up. Sometimes teams, you know, like I said, they are a lot, very much volunteer based. They don't necessarily have the time to get these donation portals up or to accept donations. And so FBB does that on their behalf. And um, it's just been really exciting for me to watch these teams grow and to connect them with each other. So, um, you know, tonight was intended as a discussion. <laughs> if anyone has any questions or insight they would like to make, things they would like to see us improve upon, you know, we're always welcome to that. Um, as we move forward, FBB is going to continue to make progress. And so there's going to be a lot of change coming constantly. Um, so I'm really happy to, to get input from others. Um, 
Well, I know, Wendy, you work a lot with these programs and you've seen them from the start all the way till now. What are things that you feel like we've improved upon and things that we really still need to make progress on? Yeah, so I think that um, one of the things that happened in 2021 that has um, really been uh, a, a great improvement is having more um like a more of a working relationship with the Beyond Belief Network leadership so that it's more of a conversation and we're getting um, feedback on what's working for them and what they would like to get from us and trying to um, support them in the ways that are most useful to them. And I think in the past, it was a more um, uh, passive um, relationship um, not that we weren't supporting them, but that there was less back and forth between the teams. And I think that that has really greatly improved in 2021 and um, is, is just growing and will continue to grow. And I think that is really exciting for the future. Um, but having said that, I think that we can always have, you know, more resources and more personally more knowledge just in general about, you know, what, what exactly are the, the best practices for these different kinds of uh, service work that you can do and how can we help you to, to enact them? Um, that's something that, you know, the, you know, our resources for the Beyond Belief Network, I think um, we had a really great library of them and then it kind of fell off. Um, updating those resources for a little while. So we're in the process of getting those updated and getting new ones. Um, that landscape's always changing. Um, and so I think that's a place where we can, we're working on it, but we still have have more to do there. Um, I do think that um, the, the, the part of why I'm so excited about HGR is that I think what the changes we're talking about making or the, or the, the ways we're talking about pivoting um, make our response to disasters so much more or preparing for disasters, preparing for climate change and sustainability. Um, we're, not, we're not just responding after the fact, we're trying to get in front of things, we're trying to have these sustainable option or sustainable work, direct work. Um, and that's something that the HDR program, being a recovery program, makes sense, we're responding after the fact and rebuilding, but now we're looking to um, trying to mitigate some of those issues from ever being a problem. And that I think is really exciting um, and something, you know, we need to figure out how to do that um, because this is new territory in some ways. So um, we're, we're working on it, we're doing that, we're figuring it out, um, but, uh, I'm really excited about what the road we're on. Yeah. Yeah, um, I mean, I definitely agree with you with HDR. In the past, we have been good at responding and that's helped us to raise a lot of money for so many disasters, not just in the US, but previously all over the world as well. Uh, but one of the things that we noticed during the winter storm in Texas that freeze is, you know, we had all this money, we raised all this money, but um, we were trying to get food and water to unhoused people in Texas. We have a number of volunteer teams there. And by the time, sometimes when the, the disaster happens um, and you're starting to respond to it, it can be a little bit too late. Uh, it's hard to really distribute when people are, to distribute really the critical supplies that can save lives when people, including volunteers, are are subject to um, the elements, the environment, um, whether you know blocked roads or sometimes at the at the time we couldn't even really get food into Texas. Um, so so that was kind of the pivotal moment for us, which made us kind of realize, okay, well, we have clusters of teams in certain areas in Florida, in Texas, um, which are really disaster prone areas. So how can we make sure that they have the supplies ahead of time, that they're really being prepared um, and training them towards that instead of just responding in the aftermath of disaster. 
And uh, like Wendy said, I really feel like that's something that we can definitely improve upon. Uh, it is always a work in progress and it's always going to be a work in progress um, just because we really want to improve impact over time. Um, so but I'm really excited over that. Yeah. And we've, and we've heard feedback from, from several teams that they want to be involved in, um, in local disaster work, but um, some of them don't know where to begin or when the disaster happens, they feel behind because they weren't already plugged into the network. So that's also part of um, our thought process and in, in, in what we're doing right now with that. Um, Sarah, where do you feel like we have done really well in terms of making progress and where do you think we can improve? Yeah, I mean, I, I, again, back to the BBN teams, I really feel like we've, and, and part of it, as Wendy mentioned earlier, was, was related to COVID. I mean, I think our BBN teams really stepped up and, and focused during COVID in a way that, you know, we, we had lots of folks doing lots of different kinds of volunteer work and, and um, the impacts was, was varying um, depending on the group. Uh, and I think that the the needs that came up for for folks to just get access to to basic you know food and and um, you know housing we had um, a, a lot of um, unemployment and um, so so again the the basic needs that people had were so present and folks had a lot of downtime where they wanted to get involved and help and so our th those teams really stepped up they stepped up in ways that mattered and then they wanted to keep doing that work even as things started to improve. Um, so, um, so yeah, really, really seeing our teams become focused on projects that, that really, really make a difference. Um, and then again, B, uh, FBB figuring out good ways to support continued growth of that work and get more teams to, to, to work on, on delivering basic necessities to people um, ha has been extremely successful. And I think going forward, just finding out, finding ways to help teams that haven't yet been able to figure out the best way to make an impact in their community. Cause I think there's a lot of interest and we cover a huge uh, geographic area. So, you know, the, the needs of the folks in, in our, um, our, our Chicago groups aren't going to be the same as the, the needs of the folks in our Florida groups. And um, what, what's the best way to help folks in a suburban community versus an urban community. So um, I think building out better guides and supports for, for teams that haven't quite figured out how to, how to tap into to what their community needs yet. Cause there's, there's so much interest and there's so much um, passion to, to help people. Um, so, yeah, so, and, and I'm, I'm really excited with, with what we're doing with the, with the disaster response program and helping equip teams and, and get them, um, the, the information and tools they need to prep for disaster. I think that's going to be, it's going to be really, um, it's going to be really cool to see how that impact, um, makes a difference during, during disaster seasons next year. Yeah. Um, and I think that something you mentioned is just helping teams to really get situated. Um, or Wendy mentioned this, um, to get started with service. And one of the things that we found out is doing service is not the same, not only in different parts of the U.S., but also for some of our teams abroad. Um, we do have a few teams that, like I said, we work in seven countries. So two of our most active teams actually are in the Philippines and in Kenya. And one of the things we discovered when we were talking to our um, team in the Philippines, it's called Humanist Alliance, Philippines International, or Happy for short. Um, and they didn't really have the same access to funds that some teams might hear, or, and they also didn't have the same access really to food because restaurants weren't necessarily 
willing to do well shunts and um the Philippines, which are already suffering, weren't necessarily willing to just give away the food to to be donated. And um, so we kind of had to come up with solutions and talking with the rest of the teams in the US really helped to kind of brainstorm that um as well. So that's something that we hope to be able to work more on going forward. And um, one of the things, you know, we keep talking about the U.S., is, but we are not located only in the U.S., even though we've kind of reined in a little bit to make more of a sustainable impact long term and to focus a little bit more on partnerships um, in the area where our resources are. We will be continuing to grow as as we grow our impact in these areas and we become more sustainable, we're going to start to expand out again. Um, and we're also, again, we have teams um, in other countries. So we're going to be focusing on expanding in areas that we already are. Yeah, I think uh, one of the things that I learned this year um, came out of some of the conversations we had with our international teams. Cause you know, one of the things that we provide for teams is um, t-shirts. It's a perk. If you volunteer a certain number of hours, you get t-shirts with our logo and it's a nice little advertising um, perk for our, for our teams. Uh, and, and I believe it was our Philippines team that was talking about that the perk of the t-shirts for them was not about advertising. That was actually clothing. Like we, that you know, they were they were viewing that as as a as being able to have T-shirts for for people who didn't have um, shirts. And and uh, I think the the money to like the the hundred dollars in the Philippines goes a lot farther than it does in like suburban Dallas. Um, so the the level of impact that we can have um, is pretty incredible. So. Some, some of those differences has been eye-opening to see and, uh, and, and very touching that, you know, we're, we're able to provide so much um, for, you know, a hundred dollar a month donation just goes so, so far. Yeah. And uh, Happy Works with children specifically, um, which, you know, they're a little bit more vulnerable as we know, a lot of the the populations that are facing or hardest hit in poverty are children, their women, um, and other marginalized groups. Tiff, can you just mention for folks real quick, if they want to sponsor a team, how, how they would do that? Yeah, sure. Um, so if you want to sponsor a team, we have our Beyond Belief Network teams all located on our website. Uh, I'll drop the link in the chat. From there, you can just search up the team and you'll you'll be able to sponsor directly that team. Any money that you do put towards the team goes directly through. Um, we don't take anything out for administrative fees, but each team has their own portal on our website. And the link is below. Um, well, I know that sometimes during these conversations, People are kind of hesitant to speak, but uh, you can feel free to reach out to us on our website. There is a contact form. You can also reach out directly to me and I'll type my email in the link. Um, one of the things we really want to do is be more accessible to everyone, um, to donors, to partners, anyone who really wants to, is interested in our work. So again, feel free to contact us with any questions that might come up through our website or through my email. And I'll just add, I know that we've made some changes on elig eligibility with CIG. And so some organizations um, who have applied in the past might be um, curious or, you know, have questions related to those changes. So feel free to get in touch with me um, if, if you have those questions. I'm happy to answer those. Yeah. And Wendy's um, email is, I'll type that in the chat as well. It's just Wendy at Band Nation Band Belief at work. Um, all right. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Good night. Good night.